Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Brian Baptist Church for this, our Wednesday night service. Uh, we're so glad to have each and every one of you here. It's going to be a special night tonight. Uh, we have, we're going to be speaking about missions tonight, and that's going to be a wonderful thing. And uh, so we're going to get started right here. Brother Andrew Goodman is going to tell us a song number, and he's going to lead us in a song while we stand. Brother Andrew. All right, everyone standing. We're going to be singing number 96. Number 96, bring them in. That's our job, to go out and bring the lost in. Number 96. singing let's begin with a word of prayer tonight dear heavenly father we thank you for the opportunity we have to come into your house we thank you that you love us uh, we thank you that you love our country we thank you that you answer prayer and uh, we pray lord that you would touch our hearts through your word tonight that you would touch our hearts through what we see and hear tonight and what we hear from the man of god tonight uh, we also pray, Lord, that uh, uh, you would show us also in our hearts that to whom much is given, much shall be required as well. And help us, Lord, in the space of grace that you are giving us to be responsible. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. and We'll continue to sing here. All right, our next song is number 126. 126, my country, tis of thee. It's because of God that we have a country. From 126, let's sing it out.
Thank you very much, Brother Andrew. Brother Paul, if you would check, see if um, uh, we have a new bulletin for the month since we're right here early in November. You may not have got it. And orange is the color of the month. If you don't have that, raise your hand. We'll be sure to get that to you. Anybody not have the orange? It's not orange, it's peach. It's peach colored, they said. And anyway, just checking, make sure anybody did not get a prayer bulletin, double checking on that prayer bulletin as well. And we seem to be good on that as well. So Brother Paul, I'm gonna have you go in back here, go in the back here, look on the Claim the Street for Christ table because we have, we have new tracks for the month here. And this is the month of November. And again, what we do is we create a track pack. And so you can have 30 of these, 30 days in the month of November. Uh, you can pass out an average of 30 throughout the month. And who do you pass them out to? You pass them out to the checkout stand, pass them out to the gas station attendants, pass them out to people walking down the street, walking out to pass them out to people at the store counter, you know, just that you run into on purpose by accident. It is not hard to get 30 of these out. I've already got two of these out. And I didn't even have a chance to get them in here in the door yet. In fact, I've got three of these out so far. And so if you want a pack of these, raise your hand. We'll get one to you, Benjamin, right up there. And you go, what does this one say? It's a gospel track, but every theme is different. And what it has to say is different. This one says, what if everyone was thankful? Uh, that's a big what if, don't you think? You know, what if everyone was thankful? It starts out, says, what if children were thankful for the food on the table? What if married couples were thankful for each other? What if we were thankful for our elected leaders? What if the media reported good news? And, you know, so it asks these things and it says, you know, what if? And it, and it talks about this concept of Thanksgiving, the obstacles, the solutions, and it's an important for people to have. And so anyway, I wanted to get that into your hand. Make sure that you did. Um, listen, I love surprises. Did anybody tell you that? I really like surprises. I mean, um, Benjamin knows this personally. Last week, uh, Benjamin, it was a surprise birthday party. He didn't know it was coming. And I like surprises. He didn't like it. <laughs> but I really liked it. Because, you know, so I like, you know, I like surprise birthdays. I like surprise elections. You know, I like all these things uh, that are surprising. I just tend to like surprises. I want to point out something in the word of God, though. There was a young king and in the nation of Israel, God did something to revive his heart. In fact, the Bible says, as, uh, as we, uh, we look there, he read in the word of God that God was angry with his country and that something needed to be done. And so he said to his, the, the high priest, he said, go inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according to all that which is written concerning us. This is a very different time. I want you to tell you this young king, he was revived in his heart. And because he was revived in his heart, God gave him an answer. This was God's answer to that king. Because thine heart was tender, and because thou, thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest that I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered unto thy grave in peace. And thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. And you go, Pastor, what does this have to do with us? God miraculously, by the way, through the prayers of God's people and the pleading of God's people, God has miraculously given us a space of grace. Amen. But, 
that doesn't mean that things have turned around. All that means regarding the United States of America is we have now slowed the rate of descent. Because it's important to understand that nothing short of revival will turn the United States of America around. You had a revived king. Why was God still going to judge the nation? Because there was not a revived people. I want you to notice something. We may be having a change of administrations. But they're still killing babies. They're still engaged in perversion. Understand that some things are being changed on the outside. But the rescue of the United States of America won't happen until people are changed on the inside. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek thy face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and uh, will heal their land. So we have, we have a great need. I'm grateful for the space of grace, but it's not as long as you think it is. And it isn't doing as much as you think it's doing. But we have a responsibility of God's people to now be very, very, very responsible. Definitely more responsible than we were in the years before COVID. We need to do that. And so I just want us to look at it seriously. Um, I am grateful for God's mercy, but I know there's a lot of work to do. So I want to make mention of that. Announcements to give you real quick again. Uh, Baptist Bread Devotionals, those are in the turnstile for the month of November. I do have very few of these. This is a Dwell Devotional Magazine. Uh, this is a 30-day devotional, and I only have one or two of these, so I want you to know about that. Uh, pray for the ladies. The ladies are going on a trip uh, tomorrow to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. They're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. We're grateful for that. Uh, men, we will, uh, we will have uh, Bible study and prayer at 8.30. Uh, we will have shuttle ministry at 10 o'clock, letting you know that is happening. Sunday is Veterans Day Sunday, and this whole place is going to be red, white, and blue. And John Martin, who's already patriotic anyway, now he's patriotic on steroids, um, he will be here on Sunday morning. Uh, a, a retired chief warrant officer from the Marines here on the birthday of the Marines. It's going to be hard to keep his feet to the floor, I'll tell you that, but we're going to have a wonderful time. Anyone who comes who has either served in the armed forces or is in the armed forces will receive a gift on Sunday. I want to let you know that's going to be a wonderful day. Also on Sunday night, uh, Brother Bob Valier, finance missionary, he will be here on Sunday night. So I want to let you know uh, that those things are coming up in the near future. Also at the end of service, in honor of uh, um, our dear missionary that is passing through town, we will receive a love offering. Uh, by the way, I, I haven't introduced people yet. And so right here, this is, uh, this is a Brother David Harris with BIMI, Director of BIMI Far East. I think I have that right. And, and sitting uh, behind you, this is your wife right here. First name again? Jenny. Jenny, Jenny is with him, and uh, she has been uh, following him all over the world, okay? And uh, this has really been true. They have been many places. Uh, some people say I've been everywhere. Other people really have. And so anyway... Uh, he will be speaking to us in, uh, very shortly. And so at this time, uh, we're going to have, oh, by the way, I just want to make one mention. Uh, there's a man you know. His name is Brother Gene. Anybody know Brother Gene? Do you know who Brother Gene is? Okay. Can anybody understand two words, cancer-free? Okay. And that's completely, utterly cancer-free, which is going to give him an opportunity to enter his creative access nation. So uh, just letting you know that things are moving ahead for that. And uh, we're very grateful for that. Uh, for those who have been praying for um, um, the elder uh, brother McFeeters, he is marking headway. He was actually able to eat a little bit today. And so just continue to pray for his recovery as well. Go ahead, Brother Ann. All right, let's stand for this final song. It's going to be number 365, How Great Thou Art. 
As we sing this song, let's direct our hearts to God. Remember, these words are directed to God. Let's sing it like that from our heart. And uh, sometimes you only, uh, you get wind of different things that were happening. And uh, one of the things that happened is late last night, after a, uh, a president-elect gave his, uh, his uh, accepted speech, um, well, amazing thing happened after everything was done. All of a sudden, a group of people spontaneously broke out and sang, How Great Thou Art, hundreds of people across that auditorium giving glory to God. Uh, I think it's important to give glory to God in everything we do, and so that was uh, surprising, and, and you know, there's, there's spies everywhere, and so uh, some, some spy, man alive, they did a video of that, and I was pretty impressed with that and very grateful with that. So again, uh, Brother uh, David Harris uh, has been with uh, BIMI now for many years, and he will... Uh, he will fill in the blanks on that. Uh, we had a wonderful opportunity of running to each other just a week ago, Saturday. And uh, 
after we talked tonight, we discovered we'd seen each other before. He looked a little familiar. Well, it just so happened that last year, he and his wife were in Santa Clara, California, uh, because their, their son is uh, a second year student now at Golden State Baptist College. And I thought, you know, he looks a little familiar, but I don't know why. And, but anyway, that's the reason. Good chance I've seen you elsewhere. Have you ever been to Pastor Smith's Preacher's Delights? Have you made it? Okay. My wife and I go to those all the time too. So you just, I'm just this guy who looks like everybody who you just happen to see walking through the room several times. And so anyway, just letting you know that. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the service over uh, to Brother, uh, Brother Harris here. And, um, and he will kind of explain everything. He's, he's completely in control now. It's like a Simon Says thing. And so anyway, and he'll explain everything that's going on. Uh, Brother Harris, come on up. Thank you, Pastor, and good evening. It's good to be with you tonight for your, uh, your service, and we're so thankful uh, for all that you do for the Lord. And every time I get the chance to meet some, uh, some other believers in a, in a church like yours that are serving the Lord and loving the Lord and sending missionaries around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is really, really encouraging to be, to be able to meet another part of the family. And we'll all get to spend eternity together, so we're looking forward to that. But uh, um, we get to also work for our Lord and try to get as many people to go with us and so we, they can enjoy the glories of heaven. So we're going to show you a video that will describe some of our work. This is not necessarily about my wife and I, but we do serve uh, as, as a Far East Director with BIMI. We have a president, a vice president, 10 field directors, and so... I'm one of the field directors. We don't really direct anything in missions other than directing people's attention and directing their eyes to the harvest. And so that's what we get a chance to do. We would like to take you on a trip. If we could just all get together, get on a plane and fly over to the Far East. But instead, since we can't do that, I'm going to take you there by way of this video and let you see a part of the world that's home to us. We served in Japan for 24 years, and over the past almost 13 years now, we've been serving as the Far East Director, which means we get to go into many of the places that you'll get to hear about here in this video. But we'd ask you to open your hearts and see the great need of the gospel around the world and in this particular region in the Far East. So we'll show the video at this time. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Since the inception of Baptist International Missions in 1960, well over a hundred missionaries have allowed BIMI to help them fulfill God's calling on their lives by taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Far East. The stories that can be told are amazing. Wherever gospel-preaching missionaries have gone, souls have been saved. Believers have been baptized, churches have been started, nationals have been trained, and the work of God has been multiplied. Great things have been accomplished, yet there is so much more that needs to be done. As we consider the Far East, BIMI has divided this area into two regions, Asia and the North Pacific. Asia is comprised of eight countries, from western China to the islands of Japan. The North Pacific includes thousands of square miles from the Philippines to the Hawaiian Islands. Nearly 25% of the world's population live in these two regions. These are people blinded by a multitude of religions, from ancestor worship and Buddhism in Asia to Catholicism and Mormonism in the islands. Atheism also is prevalent in many places like China and even in Japan, where people have never learned about the living God. These are people bound by fear as they strive to appease the spirits and find peace for their lives. Others try in vain to adhere to endless rituals in order to gain favor with the gods or even with the one true God. Those who are atheists refuse to acknowledge the God of grace, leaving them without hope both in this life and for all eternity. Each of these 1.8 billion people represent a reason for those who know Christ to surrender their lives to take the gospel to the Far East. BIMI missionaries are seeing God do great things in their ministries. 
thousands are saved and over 100 new churches are started annually. Yet, these numbers fall far short of what is needed to reach this vast area of the world with the gospel. One great need is for preachers and churches in the metro cities of Asia. There are nearly 200 metroplexes, each with a population of one million or more in this region. For example, the metro area of Tokyo has an estimated population of 37 million people, and yet there are only a handful of gospel preaching churches. The metro area of Seoul, South Korea has 23 million people. Many more families are needed to reach this city. In the Philippines, Metro Manila has over 20 million people. How many families would it take to effectively reach just these three metroplexes, let alone nearly 200 just like them all throughout Asia? These metro cities are some of the most unreached mission fields of the world. Beyond these large populated cities, the rural areas of Asia also have great needs. There are many places with no gospel preaching church. There are hundreds of islands in the North Pacific that have no gospel preaching missionary. Who will have the pioneering spirit needed to take the gospel to these remote areas? The harsh reality of the spiritual darkness in the Far East is that most Christians around the world own multiple Bibles, while the people of the Far East do not even know what a Bible is. In developed countries, many have at least some understanding of who Jesus is, while those in Asia and the North Pacific have never even heard his name. Do you know John 3.16? then you know more about the Bible than the people in this region. When Christians pray, we get to bow before the living God, while those who are lost only pray to images that have eyes but cannot see and ears that cannot hear. What can you do to help meet the great needs of the Far East? You can pray. Pray for the lost to be saved. Pray for laborers who will go. Pray for open doors for the gospel to be proclaimed. Pray for missionaries to be encouraged on the field. What can you do to help? You can give. Your giving through your local church greatly impacts the world for Christ and helps others go to the regions beyond. What can you do to help? You can go. Will you be willing to take the gospel to the Far East and to the world? Remember, Jesus said, Go ye into all the world. Our desire at BIMI is to promote involvement in missions through your local church and to help laborers get to the field. If we can be a help to you, please contact us for more information about BIMI church planting ministries in the Far East and around the world. Now, I should have included one more word in the things you can do when it comes to the Lord's work of missions and getting the gospel to the world, and that is to learn. And one of the things you can do is to learn about different parts of the world that need the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's kind of the purpose of the video that you just saw. Uh, but, you know, when a missionary goes, they have to learn as well. When, before we went to Japan, uh, we had to go and learn the Japanese language. And so I want to help the learning process tonight by helping you to learn a little Japanese. Would you like to learn some Japanese? I've already met somebody here that speaks some Japanese. I was very impressed. Now, you will be surprised how, mu how many Japanese words you know. Okay, so just hang on to that thought. Let me get my pianist to come up. And uh, we are going to teach you a song. And uh, this, I'm going to teach you a song in Japanese. All right? You I don't know if you think I can do this or not, but I can. And uh, here's the song we're going to sing. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. You know that song? Uh, if you know it, let's sing it in English first, okay? Here we go. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Now, missionaries speak a lot of different languages, so you're going to have to learn some of those languages. Already in that song, how many languages are we saying, praise ye the Lord? English and Hebrew, right? When we sing hallelujah, 
That's the, the Hebrew verb praise. Yah stands for Yahweh or God or the Lord. And so praise the Lord. We sang it in two languages. Let's learn another one, okay? Now, this one, I'm going to have to teach you three English words or you don't be able to sing a song in Japanese, all right? So first word is what's on the end of my, of my foot, which is a shoe, all right? So when I point to my foot, you're going to say what? Shoe. That's the sound that we want. It has nothing to do with what's on the end of my foot, but that's the sound that we want. Shoe means Lord in Japanese. And then I'm going to dig like I'm digging in a garden, a long-handled tool that we used to use when we worked to dig up weeds. It has a flat thing on the end. What is that? A hole. So when I'm acting like I'm digging, you will say? A hole. Just like that. A hole. So let's try it. Ready? Shoe. A hole. All right. We got one more word. We got to learn that third word. Ready? That word is mayonnaise. Now that's not the sound we want. But most people call mayonnaise by a shorter word, which is, there's the sound, mayo. Okay, let's try it. See if we, know the, we can do the words. Ready? Shoe, a hole, mayo. All right. A hole, mayo is the word praise in Japanese. So now that you've learned the phrase, shoe, a hole, mayo, let's see if we can sing it in Japanese. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 shoe a hole mayo. Hallelujah, 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 shoe a hole mayo. One more time. Shoe a hole mayo. Hallelujah, shoe a hole mayo. Hallelujah, shoe a hole mayo. Hallelujah. All right, you did a great job. Normally when I teach that to children, I'll go back several years later to that church and they'll tell me the phrase before I even say, let's sing our song again. So it's very easy to learn. And now you learn some Japanese, right? And so whenever you see some Japanese, they might be coming to the rodeo one year. And if you see some Japanese, one of the ways you can tell if they're Japanese, just walk up to them and say, shoe a hole mayo, right? And they'll probably look at you when they hear that Japanese and they'll say, ah, not to one Nihongo Hanaseru. That means you speak, you, know, you, you speak Japanese. And normally I tell everybody right about then, use all the other words that you already know that are Japanese, all right? You know a lot of Japanese words, you just don't realize it. Like Kawasaki, Suzuki, Yamaha, Honda, Toyota, Nissan, Mitsubishi, there's a lot of words you already know. But you know, as you think about missions, uh, one of the things that we do have to learn is Japanese or, or foreign language sometimes, not every place. My son-in-law went to in New Zealand where he took our second daughter and he's serving the Lord there. He arrived on a Saturday and was preaching in English the next day. I don't really think that's missions, but anyway... Uh, it is missions, but he had a chance to uh, serve there, and he's been there about seven years. Now our third daughter is getting ready to go to uh, New Zealand to help them in Christ Church New Zealand, and we have a prayer card for her on our table, if you'd like one, to pray for her. Her name's Jessica, and uh, she's going to the field. She started deputation in September, and she has about 30% of her support already, so we're thanking the Lord for uh, the nine years of ministry that she served the Lord in her local church, and now uh, she is going to the mission field herself and very excited about it. Um, our son is at Golden State Baptist College. He uh, uh, began talking to us about the possibility that he, the Lord might be leading him back to Japan. So that was very exciting to hear him talking about that during his first year of Bible college. And then this summer... Uh, unbeknownst to us, he went to our pastor in our church and began to talk to our pastor. And he said to our pastor that God has called him to preach. And so my pastor let him get up in, in church. I found out about, about it after he talked to the pastor, and I was excited. We were both excited, my wife and I. And uh, he got up to tell everybody in the church that God had called him to preach and he'd surrendered to the call. And we're excited about that. And then he told everybody, God's leading me back to Japan. 
And so uh, he, he is preparing for the ministry, and we would appreciate you getting one of our prayer cards and helping to pray for the Harris family. On the back, you'll see our four children. We have three girls, all in their 30s, all in ministry already. And then our son is 19, and uh, we'd appreciate your prayers for us. A couple other things before I get into God's Word and talk a little bit more about missions. Our, on our table, we have what's called the Far East Focus. And this is our brochure for the Far East. Feel free to drop by and get one because we'd like to ask you to help us to pray for laborers for the Far East. And that's what we designed this for because on the inside it will tell you some places where our missionaries are serving, some places where missionaries are needed, and of course missionaries are needed everywhere, right? And even where we have missionaries, our largest number of missionaries is in the Philippines in the Far East, and our second largest number is in Japan. We get a chance to go there every year and challenge those missionaries, encourage them, provide accountability, and uh, they encourage us because God's doing some amazing things on the mission field. But this also will give you some cities, of uh, places that you can pray for that need the gospel. In our presentation, we talked about these metroplexes. And, it, you know, if you have a city of Tokyo, it might be just a smaller area. There's only 11 million in the downtown area. And then when you include the other cities that connect to it, that becomes the metroplex idea that we presented in that uh, presentation. And where do you stop? You can stand in the downtown center of, of Tokyo, and as far as you can see in any direction, you could take a 360 look around in, in the Tokyo Tower, and you would see millions and millions and millions of people. And we need to get some more workers there. That's our prayer. That's, that's one of the things we're praying for. Help us pray for the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. This brochure is called Camp Bimmy, and Camp Bimmy is not a normal camp. And this is a, um, it's called a basic international missionary intensive. If you are interested in learning more about missions, we have a missions intensive at our mission in July of every year. And if it could fit your schedule and you're interested and would like to know more, grab that brochure and it will give you an idea uh, that all of our field directors as well as our president and our vice president and our wives are joining together to help teach missions during that week. We got, had, it's, it's got become so, so um, uh, uh, popular that we had to break it up into two separate weeks and we had almost 120 young people come and let us teach them about missions. They get to hear about what the Lord is doing in all, all, from all the different regions of the world, from our field directors. They get a chance to eat food from different parts of the world, and it's a really fun time. And we're praying that God will use that to help people find their place in the harvest. You say, who's that for? About the age of a junior high school student on up. And we've had some people in their 50s and 60s to come and learn about missions. And if people go to the mission field, wonderful. If they just learn about missions and go back to their home churches and get more involved in praying for missionaries, that's also uh, our heart and what we'd like to do. Uh, one final thing I'd like to mention about things on our table. We have a magazine called the BIMI World. This is produced twice a year. And we as directors, as well as many of our missionaries on the field, write articles. And in, there, in here, I wrote an article called The Blessings of Faithfulness because I get a chance to serve some amazing missionaries and to help them, and they are absolutely wonderful. They are just have some great vision. One of our missionaries has started, through his ministry, 2,700 churches. That, that's a part of that article, and it really is amazing. His name is Rick Martin, and we have other men and, and uh, ladies who are serving on the mission field, and this would basically just give you a page or two of a missionary article. There's about... 12 or 15, 14, maybe even 16 articles in here, you could take this home and whenever you have some spare time, maybe open it up to one of those articles. Uh, for example, here's one, Where Are the Laborers by Jonathan and Elizabeth Scherzer, and uh, read a, a, uh, just one page about something that's happened in their part of the world. And so uh, feel free to take one of those tonight only. They are free. So be sure to stop by and get one. In fact, tonight only you get two prayer cards for the price of one. And so our daughters and ours, and we would, uh, of course, they're always free, but uh, we would appreciate you stopping by afterwards, talk to us. If you have questions, let us know. Open your Bibles, if you will, please, as we take a look into God's Word. Let's look at Matthew chapter number 28. 
Matthew chapter number 28. And I'd like to challenge you from God's Word as we think about missions. I'm thankful uh, that the Lord gives us the wonderful privilege and opportunity to join Him in what He is doing around the world. What we live in during this age right now is called the age of grace. And God is giving, showering, showering His grace to the whole world and he is actively involved in helping people to come to know the Lord as their Savior. And we get to be a part of that. And as you're a part of missions, you get to be a part of that. And as we look to this passage, I want us to think about a, a thought tonight called, I uh, entitled the message, The Power of the Gospel. Now look at uh, verse number 18. These are familiar verses. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18. And the Word of God says, And Jesus came... And spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded, the, commanded you. And lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And God's people know that this is our Lord's command, and we call it the Great Commission. The Lord's commanding us to go into all the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's some thoughts in here I would like to present to you tonight. First of all, Jesus came and spake unto them. That's what verse 18 starts off by saying. So just imagine what it would be like instead of David Harris coming tonight to talk to you about missions. What would it be like if Jesus came tonight? and spake. Wouldn't we want to hear what he had to say? I know I would. Boy, we, we ought to be sitting on the edge. We'd be sitting on the edge of our seat listening to the words of our Savior. Hey, by the way, every time we open up God's Word, no matter where it is, we open up God's Word. God is speaking through His Word, and God can still speak through His Word. He speaks through His Word to us because this is a living book. Amen? This is an inspired book. This is God's infallible word. Everything that God wanted us to know, he put in his word. So if God put everything he wanted us to know, that means that everything that's important to God is right here. Wow, how much more should we love the word of God? And how much more should we be not just carrying it around with us? It's good that we carry our Bibles to church or maybe even during the week, but we ought to live this book and live in the Word of God and let the Word of God challenge us. And even as we read a verse like this, make it personal. Jesus came and spake unto them. But stop and think, this is Jesus speaking to me. And when we make it personal, then the Lord can direct and use His Word to show us what He wants us to do. And I'm so glad that the Lord is able to speak to us through His Word. The Lord's not going to speak audibly. He doesn't do that. In fact, if you hear voices, you need some help. What He does do, He speaks through His Word, through the preaching of His Word. He's chosen pre the preaching of the Word of God. As we listen to a man who's using the Word of God and filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit can take those words and direct us and we need our hearts directed to that which is important to our Lord and he says all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth so I want you to think about first of all what we need to do with the gospel what do we do with the gospel well when number one we need to give people the gospel we need to give people the gospel why is that because verse number 18 says that Jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The Lord has all power, and of course we understand this word means authority, but it also can mean power, and He has all power. He has all authority. And when the Lord is looking to me, and He's looking to you, and He's instructing us to do something for Him, He has the ability to help us do what He wants us to do. Amen? And so when we think about this thought of going into all the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, sometimes we think, oh, I can't do that. We're thankful for our missionaries, aren't we? And we're thankful that they can go 
we're thankful for our pastor because he can preach the word and other men in the church that are serving the Lord, we're thankful for them, but God uses all of us. And God wants to use all of us. And the Lord has all power. And so I am thankful today that the Lord can begin to direct us and to lead us as we listen to the Word of God. I was sitting in church as a, about a 16-year-old young man, and, and uh, my pastor was preaching, and I've always been taught, listen to the Word of God as it's preached, and, and, uh, and I didn't always listen the way I should, but uh, I was listening that day, and my pastor said something right in the middle of his message. And I can't tell you what passage he was preaching from. I can't tell you the the title of his message or the points of his message, but he made a statement. He said, if you're here tonight and you're not busy doing something for God, you're not right with God. Well, I don't know if anybody else that night heard that statement, but I sure did. In fact, the Holy Spirit looked, it was like he took an arrow and he shot it right down, down into my heart and it stuck and it stuck hard and, and, we had been in the, in the church for about three months, this new church that we had moved uh, to, and uh, we were enjoying the fellowship of God's people. We were enjoying the singing and praises to God, and the preaching was phenomenal and, and uh, was filled with power, and we were just enjoying the Lord in that church. And then my pastor said, I should be doing something. In fact, if I wasn't doing something, I wasn't right with him. So while he finished his message... I bowed my head and I entered the invitation and I closed my eyes. I said, Lord, I'm sorry, that's me. And I made it personal. I I wish I would always do that, but I did that day and I made it personal and I confessed because my pastor said I wasn't right with God if I wasn't busy doing something for the Lord. Well, I wanted to make, I, I wanted to make things right. So I said, Lord, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And then I said, Lord, would you show me what you want me to do, because I want to do something for you. And when I prayed that prayer, while I'm in my seat, while my pastor's finishing his message, a thought came into my mind. Two words, the bus ministry. And I didn't know what that meant. I knew we had buses that sat out in the parking lot that would go out and bring in boys and girls and moms and dads every week. We had 15 buses that sat out there. It was hard to miss them, but I didn't know anything about being involved in the bus ministry but God put that in my mind and so uh, I, I I said Lord if that's you I'll do it and you know what you know what a good soldier of Jesus Christ does when the Lord says go we go amen just obedience simple obedience and sometimes we don't even know what to do well that's where I was where do I start what do I do I had no clue But I had said, Lord, and my final prayer was, Lord, would you show me? If that's what you want me to do, I'd already surrendered. As soon as he said, the bus minister, I said, Lord, I'll do it. It's important to go ahead and surrender before we even know, before you understand all that that means. If God's put it in your heart, we ought to do what the Lord says. And so I said, Lord, if that's you, would you show me? Because if you would show me, I know you'd help me. That this is from you and not just something I'm thinking about. So the final amen was said. Everybody in this section right here began to kind of go that way. And there was only one fella in the back of the auditorium that started walking down the aisle, and I began to walk towards the aisle on on the left side of the auditorium. Well, I happened to look up, and he was looking. It seemed like he was looking at me. And he was walking pretty fast, back from about the 18th row or 20th row. He was walking pretty fast, and... I caught a glimpse of his eyes, and while he was looking at me, I didn't know who he was, and so that made me uncomfortable, but I took a couple more steps looking down, and then I looked up again, and he's still looking at me, and he's coming faster, and he's about halfway down, and we met right at the end of the aisle. His name was Brother Bill, and Brother Bill looked at me and stuck out his hand and shook my hand, looked me dead in the eyes, and said these words, David, I wonder, would you help me on my bus route? Wow. And what had just happened in my heart? You mean God can do that? He doesn't always do things that way. Sometimes we just have to go out by faith and surrender our lives to the Lord and then by faith keep serving. And God doesn't always just make things clear like that, but I'm sure glad he did because then I knew. I knew this that had happened in my mind and in my heart was of the Lord. 
and I started into the bus ministry, and I went with Brother Burrell, Brother Bill Burrell, and he was like, the only way I can describe him, he was like a, maybe a bird dog that maybe a guy who likes to hunt likes to use because when he gets his eyes set on something, he just, that dog fixes his atten attention on it, right? And we were out knocking on doors, and he'd vi visit a regular rider, and we'd walk away from there, begin to walk either back to the car or to another door, and he would just stop. And he would stare out a door. He was a, it was very strange. And, and, and he would say, I don't know those people. Let's go find out if they want to ride our bus. And he'd walk up to the door and knock on the door and tell them what church we're from. And we got a bus that comes through on Sunday. Why don't y'all come ride it with us? Boy, I liked his enthusiasm. And I began to learn to be excited about the Lord and the things of the Lord and inviting people to come to church. Well, five weeks went by. And after uh, the fifth week on Saturday morning bus visitation, we all met at the church in the fellowship hall. And uh, after the meeting was over, I went to get my pockets full of candy to, to go visit the kids and the flyers we were going to pass out. When my bus captain said, David, I want to talk to you. Come in my office. And our bus captain called me in his, in his office. He said, he said, David, we've got a bus route that needs a bus captain. I was 16. And he said, would you do it? And I said, oh, I'd love to do it. I began, he handed me the bus book. And I took two steps away from him, and that fear just gripped my heart. And I turned around, and I said, Brother O, his name was old Neil Watkins. Everybody called him Brother O. He, I, I said, Brother O, I don't know a thing of, in the world what I'm doing. He said, that's all right. The Lord will teach you. And I turned around and left. Well, what was I going to do? Well, I found some other bus captains, and they were going into the church auditorium on Saturday morning, and the lights were off, and there was nobody around. They'd get on their knees at the altar, and they would ask the Lord for the blessings, uh, the Lord's blessings on the day, and so I saw that. And I figured that's what I'm going to have to do every day I, I, before I go out on my bus route, so I counted 16 rows back. That's why I knew there was at least 16 rows on this side, because my girlfriend's birthday was October the 16th and I figured I could remember that number and so I counted 16 uh, rows back and I got underneath the pew I didn't want to be up here with everybody at the altar I went to the back of the auditorium and got underneath the pew and I'd say Lord would you help me Lord would you help me and I would beg and plead with the Lord for uh, many many minutes sometimes a half an hour or more until God gave me strength and then I would go out and invite moms and dads and boys and girls to come and Boy, I tell you what, God began to do a work. Hey, the Lord's told us to go, hasn't he? And he might not have a bus, or God might not lead you into a ministry just like me, but you can go out and give people the track like pastor's challenging you. Take, by faith, just believe that God can use those tracks to help people in your city and in your neighborhood come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Hey, God is able to speak through his word, isn't he? And God's able to use those tracks to help somebody come to know. And listen, has there ever been a time when people need the Lord more than they do now? That's why we need to get out the Word of God. We need to do our part. Carry some tracks with you. Give them out. So whether you're going to work in the bus ministry or whether you're going to be a missionary here at home, let's do something for the Lord. Give people the gospel. Why? Because Paul said the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And as we give out God's word, God will bless it. God will use it. And sometimes we look at those little tracks and we wonder, uh, it, does this really help anything? Well, I've met several people in my experience through the years. In fact, we went to Japan and met a, um, uh, uh, a pastor and his wife of a military church. Her testimony was that somebody had placed a track in the doctor's office table. And she saw that track. She didn't know what it was, but when she saw the title of it, I don't even remember what the title was, but when she saw it, the title attracted her attention. She didn't know she could take it. She thought she was stealing. And so when nobody was looking, she reached down there and put it in her purse. And she took it home and she read it. And she heard about Jesus dying on the cross for her sins. And she heard how that God loved her and how that she needed to have her sins forgiven and the Lord would forgive her. And, and, and she, she could place her faith in Christ. And she took the track to her husband who was in construction. And that construction worker, tough man, took that track and both he and his wife read the gospel message and they both got saved. 
And when we went to northern Japan, started in a church with the, for the Japanese, they were, he was pastoring a church to the military in a place called Misawa, Japan, because they were reached by somebody giving them a gospel track. Give people the gospel. You know what? Missions is not just overseas somewhere. Missions is getting involved in the Lord's work, and you can be involved right where you are in your church, in your home, in your neighborhood. Give people the gospel. I've got too many stories to give you all of them, but it's exciting to find out that God can bless His word. Number two, not only give people the gospel, but love people with the, with the gospel in view. Love people with the gospel in view. As I began to go to Japan and pass out God's word, and as I've been in different places, you know what I've learned? Sometimes the work that we do is tough. Now in Japan, you can pass out thousands of tracks. We passed out 20,000 tracks for our opening service. You know how many people came? Nobody. Now we had 19 people, but they were all another missionary family, a national pastor and his family that was going to preach for us that day, a couple friends who brought somebody from the area they lived in an hour and a half away. And so nobody from our city came. Well, we knew that we we're going to have to start loving people with the gospel. And people would, I'd knock on people's door, and they would look at me, and I would tell them my name and tell them where I was from, our church name, and they would look at me and say, Christ, and slam the door. You know, it's kind of hard in some parts of the world. Hey, it might be hard where you are, but don't let that discourage you because we ought to just keep loving people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, what does that look like? Well, a man who, who challenged me with this thought, he was talking about how we ought to love people. He said, when you love somebody, what do you, what do, you do? When a, when a husband loves his wife, what, what does he do? He'll write her a note. He'll buy her flowers. He'll take her out to eat. He'll buy her a gift. These might be some things you might need to do, man, by the way, if you haven't been doing that lately. But he said, you know what? This, when we do that, these type of things when we love somebody, right? We'll call him up on the phone. We'll text him and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. He said, why don't we do that for people that we meet along the way who are lost? And so they met, he and his wife met a lady who was a Catholic and who didn't want to hear what he had to say. Uh, they had to say he, she wouldn't even receive a track. She said, I don't want to have anything to do with it. You know what they did? They put her on their, their list of people they were going to visit every week just to show the love of Christ. And so they would go back, and when she wasn't home, they'd write a note. We're praying for you and your family. And they'd sign their name and put it in the door. Or they'd stop by and just say, hi, how you doing? We're thinking about you. We were just driving by. And they would, they would just say hello. Or they'd call her up, or they'd send her a text, or they'd buy, the wife would buy a gift and take it by and invite her out to eat in order to get to know her and show the love of Christ. Never once did they have an opportunity to give her the gospel. And then, one day, after about 40 or 50 visits, after about 40 or 50 weeks of showing the love of Christ, that lady had a need in her life. And she didn't know where to go. And she didn't know what to do. Guess who she contacted? That couple that had been saying, we love you. We're praying for you and your family. She called them up on the phone. And she said, I want what you have. Would you tell me about Jesus? And they went to her house, told her about Jesus, and she got saved. Hey, we need to love people with the gospel. Give people the gospel. Love people with the gospel. And finally, I, I, I think of this thought that Paul used, uh, used in uh, Romans chapter 1. Turn there, if you would, with me. Romans chapter 1. This is a separate message by itself. I'll try to give you the thought quickly. Romans chapter number 1 in verse number 14. Romans chapter 1, verse 14, Paul said, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to, to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul said three things there, very, very important for us to remember. He said, first of all, I'm, an, I'm debtor. Somebody's given me the gospel. In fact, God showed up and helped him to realize the Lord said, and he said, who, who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. 
And he was a debtor because the Lord had come to him and helped him to realize that he had been persecuting people that loved the Lord and he'd been persecuting the Lord himself and he got saved, right? He was a debtor now. Now that he'd received the gospel, there's a debt that he needed to pay, not just keeping the gospel, he needed to give it out to others and live with the gospel in mind. And so Paul said, I'm a debtor. Number two, he said, I'm, I'm ready. That's a great thought in verse number 15. I am ready so much as in, as in me is. I am r- ready to preach the gospel to you that are in, at Rome also. My, my dear friend, are you ready to share the gospel with somebody? Once again, get those tracks ready. Be prayed up. Be asking the Lord to direct your steps to that person that needs to hear the gospel message. Are you ready? There's people that are around us all the time that need to be saved. They need somebody to love them to Christ. Are you ready to share the message? I'm glad that I was taught to try to be ready. I wish I could say I'm always ready, but I'm, I'm not always ready. But I was walking through our church one day as a teenager, and we had, I had been in some wonderful soul-winning ministries and, and we were taught, look for every opportunity. Not, don't pass any sinner by. Tell everybody about Jesus that you possibly could. And I'm walking down through the hall of our church one day. Secretaries weren't there. Nobody was there. It was actually on a Saturday. And the telephone rang in the hallway. It would ring in the office, but nobody was there. And so the, it started ringing in the hallway. And so I'm the only one there. And I was a teenager. So I picked up the phone and I said, Lake City Baptist Tabernacle, this is David Harris. How may I help you? There was a lady on the other end of the line, and she said, Oh, I'm sorry, I've got the wrong number. Now, I'm glad that I had a preacher that told me I should be ready. Because I said, Ma'am, you you might have called the wrong number, but would you mind if I ask you a question? She said, What is that? I said, If you were to die today, do you know for sure you're on your way to heaven? She said, No, I don't. I said, you know, the Bible says, and I began to go through that, the plan of salvation, telling her that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, telling her that the wages of sin uh, is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And I spent some time explaining those verses, and she let me keep talking, and she kept answering the questions, and she realized that she needed Christ as her Savior. And there on the phone, after talking with her for about 20 minutes, she prayed and said, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Hey, we need to be ready. Are we ready? Paul said, I'm ready. And then he said in verse 16, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. And we should never be ashamed of the gospel, amen? Live with the gospel in mind. There are so many opportunities that we have to be missionaries, not just support missionaries, not just pray for missionaries, but be missionaries and put on that missionary mindset and that, 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 uh, that, uh, that hat of being a, or that mind of being a missionary even now and try to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ in your area. Make you, just make you a circle around your neighborhood and start visiting people, inviting them to church and, and, and branch out into where God would help you to meet somebody and invite them to come. Hey, you don't need a bus. Uh, you, don't, you don't even have to have a car. You say, hey, and tell them about your church, and why don't you come, come visit our church? We'd love to have you. And uh, you know what? We could be ready, and, and we could be uh, used of God to get people the gospel message. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity that God's given us all around the world to be able to see God at work. You know, that's what we see in missions. God is at work. And we go to the Philippines, and we see some amazing, amazing ministries with lots and lots of fruit. And then we go to places like uh, China and, and uh, the Koreas and uh, South Korea and, and Japan where maybe the work's a little bit more difficult and you have to work harder to make relationships with people and give them the gospel, but God is still doing a wonderful work. Just with our Far East missionaries, we see about 10,000 salvation decisions annually and also about uh, 100 churches started every year just in the Far East. So God's doing some amazing things. People are being saved, and those nationals are being trained for ministry, and then they are going out. One of our missionaries, he went and started five churches. Those churches were taught the right way. They were taught to to study the Word of God, and, and he discipled them and 
taught them about giving to missions and about going and being witnesses. And now those five churches are a hundred churches. And it multiplies. When, when the nationals be, uh, began to do what the missionaries had been teaching them to do, and God's doing some amazing things all around the world. The power of the gospel. And God blesses His Word. So let's continue to keep our eyes focused upon the Lord and His Word. Give out the gospel message so that people can be saved because there is power in the gospel. And you know what? We need some of you, some of you young men especially, that to listen and to learn and, and to possibly even launch out into the deep of preaching the Word of God because the world needs God's Word. It needs preachers who will preach the Word of God. And we're so thankful that God's blessing us with many, many more missionaries every year. And if we can be a help to you in the area of missions, give us a call. Let us know how we can answer questions about missions and uh, let you know further what God is doing all around the world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the work that you're doing in the world and for your gospel that is the power of God into salvation. We're so thankful for the way that you're working in people's lives. But what is needed are laborers. More people that will take the gospel into their neighborhoods and into their cities. And more people that will take the gospel into all the world so that others can be saved. Lord, I ask you that you would give us laborers for the harvest. Continue to bless our workers that are on the field. Give them souls for their hire and, and, and their labor and encourage their hearts. And Lord, I ask you to you encourage the, the hearts of these dear people as they continue to serve here in their church. And we thank you for all that they do for you. And as we near these uh, last days of opportunity that you've given to us, Lord, help us to go by faith and to love people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Pastor, would you come? Amen. Let us stand together. And if you can, find your songbooks. Turn to number 319. 319. Set my soul on fire after hearing a message like that. It would just be completely wrong to not give you an opportunity to respond. I don't know what is happening in your heart tonight. Uh, but you need the opportunity tonight to put wheels to whatever God is doing so the altar is open. And as we sing this song together, if you have a need or if you have a commitment or God's drawing you, you come while we sing this song together, number 319.